Hi everyone, this is Dr. Stefan. In this video, I'd like to tell you about three things you should really know about pulmonary fibrosis. Pulmonary fibrosis just means lung scarring, scarring of the lungs. You've got a scar in the lungs. So for example, if you imagine you've got a cut on your hand and then you play around with it a bit and it just heals with an abnormal scar. It just looks a little bit odd. In the lungs, you can have similar things. You can have injury to the lungs. You can have uh, all kinds of conditions that may be associated with forms of lung scarring and hardening of the lung tissue. Now, if you imagine that, you need to know three main things. The first thing is that some types of pulmonary fibrosis can actually get worse over time. So the scarring itself, the scars it's, uh, themselves in the lungs can actually progress. They can encompass more and more of the lungs. And it's really important to know that because some conditions such as idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis or various other conditions that are associated with lung inflammation or maybe uh, they're related to inhaling something from the environment that triggers an inflammatory reaction in the lungs. Some of these things can actually lead to more and more scarring as the years go by. And that means that the lungs will become harder and harder and it may be harder to breathe. So it's important to monitor. So this is basically the second point that I'd like to tell you about pulmonary fibrosis. If you've got a diagnosis of pulmonary fibrosis, a doctor mentioned that there is there are signs of pulmonary fibrosis, for example, on a chest x-ray that you've had in the past or on some other imaging exam that you've had. It's really important to see your doctor regularly and see what is the progress of the fibrosis in your case, because it can vary from person to person. Some people may have very stable scars that are from an old infection like tuberculosis or something like that that generally do not progress do not have to get worse but then again that may not always be the case in some situations the scarring can get worse and it's important to recognize that early to intervene with treatment so ideally how would you monitor that so every few months or maybe yearly you would have a checkup with your doctor potentially a lung function or a breathing test may be performed such as a spirometry or a more complex breathing test depending on local arrangements and what kind of scarring there is in your lungs potentially your doctor may request an updated chest ct or a detailed imaging of your lungs or maybe x-rays or things like that but generally for the progression of lung scarring for assessing progression we generally use computed tomography or chest scanning and also it's really important to keep track of what's going on with your symptoms are your symptoms actually getting worse from month to month from year to year do you feel that you're able to do less and less you're able to walk less and less climb fewer stairs before you stop it's important to keep track of these things and if you feel that there's any worsening you should really monitor the scarring with your doctor. The third thing that I'd like to mention is that if the fibrosis is indeed found to be progressive, there is treatment to slow it down. And this is, well, reassuring in a way, but in this, in, on the other hand, it's not really great because the treatments that we have do not at this moment reverse the scarring. So this is why it's really important to go and check with your doctor early and monitor the fibrosis regularly. So if there is progression, you can introduce treatment at an earlier stage because then it means that the decline can be slowed down from the beginning. So that's really important. So the treatments that we have, which are called antifibrotic treatments, do not reverse the scarring process in the lungs, but they do slow it down. And the rate of lung function decline is generally halved, so one half, of what it would be in the absence of treatment. So this is really important and the treatment can be available for various forms of fibrosis, not only idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, but sometimes even for other forms, um, lung scarring, other conditions associated with pulmonary fibrosis that is progressive over time. And long term, even if we can only slow down the process of scarring, this can still make a very big difference. So I'd like you to imagine that, for example, if the average lung capacity is around three to four liters, so that's how much air fits into the lungs. If someone with pulmonary fibrosis loses, let's say 200 milliliters each year of that lung capacity because of hardening in the lungs and progression of the fibrosis. If we intervene with a treatment that reduces that rate to 100 milliliters per year, so half of the 200, you can imagine that over a long period of time, let's say 10 years, that can make a huge difference. So 200 milliliters times 10 is two liters. So in 10 years, you would lose half of an average 
lung volume, let's say, of four liters. But if you're only losing 100 milliliters times 10, so one liter over 10 years, you're only losing a quarter of the lung function. So it's really, really important because it does help us to buy time to have a better quality of life over the long period of time. So that's really important. Those are the three things that I really wanted to share with you in this video. There are some types of pulmonary fibrosis that can be progressive, they can worsen over time. Regular monitoring is really important. If you've got pulmonary fibrosis diagnosed, check with your doctor regularly. Is this getting worse? Is it something that you need to look into it further? Do you need to do anything else? Do you need further testing? And then remember that if it is indeed progressive, there are treatments that can potentially slow it down. Hopefully this was helpful. If you have further questions, do leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you in future videos.